Hello guys, good evening. Uh, today is 31st of January, last day of January, wrapping the month up. Uh, sorry for a late video, been a very busy, busy day for me. I'm going to try to make a quick video, go through everything fast. Uh, I'm going to be short on the introduction. A quick introduction is that um, these are my daily recaps from my timestamp trade ideas from my community where I give the watch list and the news plays and the levels in the pre-market we trade based upon those this was our news plays you can see tesla walmart para amd microsoft google ba starbucks ma powell sofi bsc and others right so we we do repeatable setups we do not do anything gut feeling or just randomly or we just do repeatable repeatable setup that show again and again and again that they have probability of working so that's what we do day in day out repeatable setup repeatable system these were my the levels that i provided to everyone today you can see this levels and how these panned out uh, specifically smci was a big winner today on this that we will discuss then we'll discuss uh, apple was a short today as well and we would also discuss the uh, how the, we traded the fomc today and um, what we could have done better and then we'll discuss market analysis in the end of this video if you are just interested in market analysis you can go to that segment i am going to go a little fast today hopefully this introduction was good let's start with our first play all right guys our first play today was smci we came ready with smci what was the setup on smci today smci was our day two setup and what were the levels on smci the levels were 500 was a support and then resistance pivot was 50. as soon as the market opens i see smci pushing over the clouds why did i like it it's pushing over my pivot that i gave everyone it's pushing over my pivot it's pushing over my pivot it's over closer to the cloud the risk is really low so that's why i told everybody right at open that you can see the timestamp recap here that we want to scalp on the watch and as soon as I saw that I long some, I added more into the position. And then it was all about, you know, I had the shares, uh, options were a little spready, but some of the options went 500% as well. 500 calls went 500%. So my, I gave everybody the first target in first five minutes was um, 520. Then I gave everybody 528 target. And we met both those targets in first 20 minutes. Then I gave everybody 535 target because what we do is if you are in options, you take profit, you roll into the further options. And then I gave everybody 535 target and then we hit 541. That's where I closed the lotos. And I did mention that such a strong move you can see from yesterday. Where do I get my levels from yesterday? You know, this is where I got my 528 level and this is where I'm getting my 548 level, 544 level, sorry, right here. So 544 was my next level and 544 target came and we got out at that target completely, completely out of calls, completely out of everything, guys. So you can see literally it was a it was a 30, 30 dollar per share trade. We started from five, five tens, right? So um huge win, huge win. And now what I want to say to you that when I got out look the fade right so i said told everybody i was on the voice that we are extended and it faded 20 points since we took the took it out right so 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 you know why i took the trade and you see how i got out of the trade and it was a b minus c minus short scalp as well but look at our timing you know that's when i would took 1005 is when i said out of it and from 1005 to 11 o'clock it faded $20 right so this is it's not about just your entry it's about holding your positions for huge wins if I had just got out with five or six dollars that's that's not you know I'm risking five dollars and making five dollars scalp that's that's not how I want to do it I want to I'm risked five dollars six dollars I made thirty dollars right that's how you do it on the options right if you're risking fifty percent on the options then you're making three hundred percent you know so that's how you do it so very proud of smci today guys um you uh, hopefully everybody got it what was the setup why were we long here is my time stamp recap and no hint side everything live guiding my community step by step on smc all right guys let's look at next one next one was starbucks what was the planning on starbucks let's go back to the news play planning on starbucks was uh you know i 
neutral bias but keeping 100 psych on watch for a breakout or reject what was my support pivot 96 my community knows the plan on the gap ups if support pivots breaks down we do a gap fill if support pivots hold we do the long and let's see what happened there let's go back and let's check it out um, one second so let's look what happened with spar starbucks so starbucks breaking that those pivots rejecting right from the pre pm highs i told everybody right there you know if you were late right a lot of people were already in but by time i was telling them to short starbucks i said short the bounces watch the bounces i told everybody in the, after the first 10 minute candle was so bearish and even after mine telling that it faded from 96 all the way to 93 100 percent on the puts amazing trade guys amazing trade that was over three dollar per share profit our risk was here on the cloud risking like less than a dollar making three dollar that's how you do it and i was giving the i gave the 93 target to everyone on voice and we got the 93 target guys here's my guidance you saw my pre-market plan and i was on the voice guiding everybody beautiful trade on star but yeah here you can see like everybody was doing great on starbucks 100 percent on by hamad on starbucks and hornet was also you know short and then jay was doing good so you see the how whole community was trading it and that's the beauty of it you know we are not you know everybody's executing themselves with confidence all right let's look at coin now so coin was on watch list again for me and i was on the voice i saw the coin strength why did i like the coin again it was bullish over the clouds first five minutes is i told everyone coin is bullish over the clouds and told everyone it's a good long you risk the clouds and you risk the low of the day and look at here right bearish 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 because this day was bearish and this day was bullish because it's the system tells us it's bullish right and then um our first target hit 132s then my next target was 135s and i i told everybody lock some leave half right and um then it was just about the managing the trade all day right and i was all out when at 134s when this breaks right so we are in at 130s we are out at 134s we lock half at 132s rest at 135s easy trade great risk reward beautiful and we really did good in the community on coin all right let's look at tesla now guys so what was the plan with tesla today what was happening with tesla so let's look at the tesla completely the picture on tesla let's check it out all right let's just look at this screenshot this picture that i had in the morning i gave everybody the support pivots and resistance pivots in the pre-market the support was 185 resistance pivot was 188 i said i will long if it calls over 3450 clouds and resistance pivots follow the price you know i was busy with smci then Vinay came in and he said dips versus 186 so that was his risk too long and i already gave the plan to everybody in pre-market i told them there was this news as well it pivot breaks and then you know i was on voice as we we're talking about it that we are going to push and it was all about managing that trade not a big range but what i want to show you is that it was in the gap over this pivot right you could add here right at the open on the clouds or you can add over 188 and then your first target is always low of yesterday which is um, uh, you know resistance and you met that low of yesterday and 19060 was the target that i gave everybody and let's let's see um, what else did tesla do let's let's go back let's go let's check it out so and then the tesla it i, I told everyone it, it is reclaiming yesterday's lows it's still in 512 ema cloud trend there's no stopping out 512 ema cloud trend is still holding right and it it eventually hit 192 you know you could see the resistance here on 192 you can see the resistance here on 192 on tesla and then it broke 512 and that's when i told everyone you know of course you get out but that told everyone it can pull to 190 and i was and when i told everyone that 217 that it can pull to 190 and it faded from that 
that area all the way to 189 almost two dollars a lot of people in the community did that short scalp you know it's a b short scalp breaking the trend always pulls back from 512 it always pulls back to 3450 so you know so nice long guidance and you see the continued continuous updates on uh, the break of the trend profit taking and even short and of course this was a volatility in fomc we'll discuss it later but this was where the main trade was done on tesla all right guys let's talk about amd now so okay so amd initially it what was my pivot? let's go back to our news we we do everything as per plan so the pivot on amd was 166 and 170 that was a resistance pivot i saw that amd is not able to break that right so that's when i started a starter short i started a starter short but then it was not breaking down under the ema clouds either and it was swiping back up that's when i closed the starter short and then i told everybody that i'm gonna long scalp it over the 166 i don't want the dips i don't care but i want a high probability trade and you can see here i said short the starter close the starter 166 confirmed long scalps target 170 and we didn't get 170 but we got almost close 169 from that 166 you are getting 169 that three dollar a share trade guys nice move on the call then you're supposed to take the profits here and um, you know i told everyone you can leave one third leave one third on that and uh, and that's what it did then it dipped back you know if you're small size it dipped back, bounced from EMA clouds, and then trended back again. My main trade was this opening long, but I was guiding people that, you know, it's it's holding that 512 clouds all day. And it eventually did meet my target of 170, right? But, um, but I was in that morning trade. But the point is, again, guys, the system's telling us it's turning bullish. It's all, all about having a good entry. Um, I had a starter short, you know, but... I, I have to be ready. I have to be ready to see what system telling me. And there is no shame in changing bias and turning bullish, right? There, if I was staying short, I was. If I was adamant or I was stubborn, I would have lost so much money by the time AMD was squeezing to 169, right? So that's what you do, guys. That's how we trade every day, day in day out. I make sure I'm guiding my community on the right side. For some, it might seem overwhelming because people are used to be trading with a bias. Oh, I have a short bias, long bias. We don't, we don't have a bias. We watch the price action and that's how we develop the bias. And we follow our system strictly without any exceptions. I mean, there sometimes there are exceptions, but mostly. All right, guys, let's look at Apple. So Apple, 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 Apple. So Apple support pivot was 186.30, 187.22. So those were two support pivots. I told everybody heavy short if keeps failing the pops. I told everybody at the open and Apple faded down from that level. 10 minute will not do the justice to the move. So Apple faded back from that top 187s all the way to 184.79 guys. So that was a pivot, easy short with the market, heavy and you know, morning trade into 10 a.m and you always take profits into 10 a.m all right i'm going to talk about this trade p o w l let's go back to the news sheet what i was saying right so surpluses earnings and revenues the pivot is 100 and the support is 92 bullish to neutral bias if it rejects 100 we will short it if it gets over 100 no short bullish of course and let's see why was POWL special? What did it do? It went over 100 to 125. Why? I'll show you why. Because it was an A plus setup that we have traded again and again and again. And if you see POWL was at all time highs, all investors are money, in money. Nobody has a reason to sell. Short sellers are getting spooked. And above that, 100 psychological level, guys. Every day I am showing you trades with the SEMCI was 500 psychological level, POWL was from 100 psychological level. Look at this consolidation. This is the A plus setup. I always, always talk about that this consolidation at highs, that's when the real breakout happens. And POWL, if you added at open risking that 100, 
it went to 124 almost 20 dollars you know uh, move there on powl i was busy with you know smci but i got a dm somebody traded powell few people in the community so very proud of that they know that it was an a plus setup really really good very proud of this this setup and you don't have to trade anything right if you traded smci that's fine but the point is there are opportunities everywhere, repeatable systems. That's what I'm trying to teach you day in, day out. Let's look at Boeing quickly. Um, so Boeing guys, uh, let's go back to our new display sheet. And um, so Boeing levels were 201 support, 199.50 and resistance period was 205, 205, right? So that was our plan. And I said bullish to neutral to long versus 200 and 201. So this was the plan I gave to everybody on the Boeing. So what did Boeing do? Let's go. You know, you have your plan, you have your levels and here goes Boeing. And it was strong. I was on the voice telling everybody that Boeing is a super strong setup. And um, let's see if you can find out the text. Okay. So, you know, I was on voice talking about that. And then I saw the flag breakout middle of the day. I told everybody about the flag breakout. And then we pushed log into two tens, two thirteens, end of the day, five twelve breaks, you get out, right? The point is, guys, you need to be ready, right? You need to be ready. If you have a risk level, let's say we have a risk level on Boeing of, um, of what's that risk level, um, you know, 201, so we clearly have a risk level, right? Wherever we're adding, let's say we add two, two or four, right? And if we add here, our risk level changes, our first risk level becomes the low of the day, wherever you add. Then the second risk level becomes, um, you know, the, the pivot or what we are talking about. We can't risk this much, it's too much of risk. But if I'm adding here, my first risk always becomes this, right? Of course, if we had a dip, then our risk would have been that. If I'm adding here, that's my risk. Amateur move, pull back to 512. Amateur move, pull back to the 512 EMAs, and then hold that 512 EMAs and flag break and big setup. And this is one of the midday setups, you know, I, I teach in my webinars. Uh, you know, if, even if you miss there the open, there the Boeing was a nice trade in the mid of the day after 10 a.m. So just wanted to, um, you know, recap that example. Really, really nice move there. Let's look at a uh, few losers. Um, I was in the Bank of America today as a day too long setup. And uh, when it was pushing higher, that's where I, you know, added along that, you know, um, but it was choppy in the clouds. So I held a little bit. And when the next time it finally broke down here, and then I just moved on because, and then I said, it's a short, right? And the Bank of America is a short. And you could have easily shorted it back down here with the market. But this was a day two failure, Bank of America. So let's look at these, um, uh, you know, other day two setups, which actually worked. So UPS was a day two short. UPS was a day two short. It was a day two setup in the pre-market, you know, pivot support 144, 144.46. I told everybody it can fade under 144. And, you know, push into the clouds, fade back under 144 to 142, right? So, you know, it's, as long as under the cloud is bearish, you just have to get that entry. Let's say you get an entry here, you got squeezed out and you don't get out fully here because you watch this candle, then you get back in and then you fade it all the way down. So it was a day two setup. Other day two setup which worked, which uh, I missed completely was uh, GM, but I know a few of our traders in the community were trading GM, um, you know, uh, Chad was on GM because he added it, um, because this is what I teach every day and that's why I'm proud of it because everybody knows these repeatable setups and everybody watches it. I missed it, but you know, my traders who follow my teachings, they had it and Journal Motors was did what it was supposed to do yesterday when we were trying to long it and gave a nice day to move from 3840s all the way to close to 40 bucks. You know, beautiful move on these options for these small accounts. 
So these are the day two setups, guys. And I always encourage you guys to learn. All right, let's look at uh, Google. So Google was, uh, I tried to long Google again. It was only a starter. As I always teach you, unless the pivot is broken, it's a starter. So what was the pivot? So pivot Google, let's go here in the news play. Pivot was 144, right? So 144, it never broke 144, never broke 144. I had a starter, small starter in the Google because I wanted to see if it breaks 144. But when I see this candle, I get out. But at the same time, you know, I teach everybody that, you know, you see I'm starter and out of the starter, it's, it's not going to work. Just like AMD, I was short, but I went long. You know, and Google after that was just a short under 144 pivot, but I didn't short it because it was in this range and it was not worth it, right? So I took my starter loss and moved on. So maybe, you know, Google, let's see if tomorrow market is bullish. We'll see if it reverses today. Usually it takes three days uh, after earnings to stocks to reverse, but uh, you can see how choppy it was today. And that's why I didn't take any short trade because this tight range, you know, even though the range broke down later in the day, but that was too late. I'm going to take a little time on Walmart. Um, I came in the day with a bullish bias on the Walmart, but I didn't add on that bias. I was waiting. So when it pulled back, swiped back up, you know, 166 was the level that I was really watching. But then 166 was you know was under under the clouds right it's a c minus setup i was hoping here either walmart holds this cloud or breaks out of 168 so those were my two levels to long it right luckily i would have added luckily i was busy in other trades i didn't add it and when i saw this candle i said no you know just wait for 166 it did bounce from 166 but at that time it was not worth the trade so this um you know the the news on 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 walmart um didn't really bring any investors uh, that they are doing the split so anyways just wanted to recap uh, um, you know i could have in hindsight i could have shorted it but just wanted to recap it that the, you always follow the system no matter how biased you are the system is what you must must always always follow guys all right guys let's discuss by qqq fomc so um, whole day SPY and QQQ were bearish, right? So that we were in the trend. We were in that bearish trend since morning. I, I told everybody to short scalp SPY. Right at open, I told everybody to keep short scalp SPY, you know, keep short scalping it. So that was my guidance. System was bearish. I was on voice and also, um, you know, it was under all of our pivots, right? Just take our pivots, right? It was under our pivots. I'm not going to spend too much time. Uh, 488 and um, uh, 420s, um, you know, so it was under our pivot. So it's spy was a short under our pivots right here, and QQQ was also heavy. It was a short, so it was a nice winning short for everybody before the FOMC. Then we were sitting on our hands, right? And then the FOMC hits, and I, I tried to long it, and we did some longs here, but then it pushed into the resistance 489. So that was always the key, and then pop. You should avoid trading when Powell is speaking if you are always get chopped in and in, in SOFOMC. And that's what happened, right? We were here, you know, when I was holding some in the and then he said something and then we rejected right at the resistance. And after that it break the EMA clouds, there was no long. There was no long once this bearish candle came up. And um, you know, I said spy failing 3450. And again, it goes to my, my VIX teachings. I told everybody this morning, if VIX goes over 14, everything is bearish. And whole day, whole day, VIX was, uh, VIX was fading. So VIX was fading and SPY was pushing, right? So let's see. So whole day, I think I said in opposite. So whole day, VIX was pushing and SPY was fading. There you go. You see the VIX was pushing and I gave these pivots to the VIX in the pre-market only. The VIX pivots 1350, and, you know, and this is just a recap of how we shorted in the open using these two strategies, um, the VIX strategy with the SPY. But the point is even after FOMC, the VIX faded, a SPY bounced. And then again, when, when SPY rejected from that resistance and then VIX came back over 14, back under... 3450 so there was no long here if you were trying to long that was a mistake you know because 
it was short here and then it was short under that break and you could see that my my price alerts going down 34 50 break you know 30 all those so you know even i got a little chopped i left some profits i was long here and then but i got out you know because when when it tells me that it's getting bearish no need to touch it just just get out so that was all the chop and then the fade in the end that came and you can see everything at the end kind of faded you know um, nvidia was earlier short in the day everything faded end of the day so that was fomc it was kind of uh, you know nothing big uh, spy only traded 150 percent atr qqq traded only 120 percent atr on fomc sometimes we trade many hundred you know couple uh, hundred percent atr too sometimes hundred so um so it was okay i know uh, if you caught that flush that was good if not you know let's let's get ready for tomorrow all right guys plan for tomorrow we will have all these plays on our watch list which is um you know google uh, microsoft amd everything on our watch list but we need to watch vix tomorrow because what powell said today was it it's they are not going to pause in march and they're going to see more data so they are going to probably pause in may and rate cuts are coming but a lot of market was expecting the rate cuts in march even though it was 50 percent i think so um we watch the stocks which are impacted by that right iwm will be impacted by that um you know the smaller names like um, upst and others they will be impacted by that so we will be watching that and talking about spy guys you know if this was this is a big big level that we are breaking we are breaking down on the 512 EMA clouds so i don't know if tomorrow will be green if we are under this low today we can have another red day and reset you know we have room to pull back to um, 480s and then 475s so we'll see so the plan tomorrow is simple if vix is strong we stay short biased if spy stays under this um today's lows we stay short buys look at there's no even a single wick on spy today guys we literally closed at the lows right literally closed at the lows so and um maybe it all depends on the and look at qqq that's even even bad that's even bearish close if you look at qqq it broke that 512 clouds already and it can pull back to 414 so we are very bearish bias is bearish going into tomorrow if vix comes under 14 maybe we change the bias um you know but as long as vix is over 14 we stay with the bearish bias we keep uh, keep eyes on vix we keep eyes on yields and dollars and then we accordingly we trade these names and we keep eyes on you know the semiconductors have not really faded yet so we keep eye on those semiconductors and not to forget guys big apple earnings tomorrow right if apple is selling off into the earnings then we might sell off a little more um before the apple earnings so you know apple broke 50 ema when something breaks 50 ema you know what it does and then there it goes i uh, know under 50 ema is always 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 bearish remember that that's a big learning and we keep eyes on the banks guys the you know so the smaller banks which are impacted by the rate interests the kre etf and we will look at that um, netflix guys netflix if market pukes netflix has a lot of room to pull down so we watch that as well we never get biased I, i'm not saying just go tomorrow first thing in the open get the puts but all i'm saying that a lot of these indicators are pointing for another red day and we will be ready with our levels with our, our indicators with our system and we'll trade accordingly i definitely have some room to uh, pull down to 50 ema as well so vix tomorrow if breaks out of 14.50 that's going to be bad for the markets so um, yeah we'll be ready ups day to fade might fade more tomorrow and um, walmart yeah big big uh, bummer candle there starbucks big red candle on that gap fill may might fade some tomorrow as well we watch that anyways guys um that's it sorry again for a late video um i'll see you guys tomorrow take care bye bye